Hey, this is Ken Finn at Capital Advantage Tutoring, and it's my job to get you past the Series 7. Today's, today's topic is going to be convertible bonds, convertible securities, both bonds and preferreds. Kind of the formula is the same thing, but what happens is people get confused a little bit, and it's one of the more common things I get asked to go over. I've done the margin videos. I haven't done options videos yet. I will probably put them on a paywall because I'm a jerk. Um, but we'll see what happens. So let's talk about this for a second. So convertible bonds are debt, convertible preferred to equity, but they're both fixed income. Remember that. Since they're both fixed income, they pay a set coupon or an interest rate or whatever it is. And they pay that every six months or if it's a preferred every quarter. But the advantage to these things is that they turn into common stock. Keep in mind on this exam, anything that turns into something else, 99% of the time is turning into common stock. So the good thing is that's like a derivative, whether it's a right or a warrant or a convertible or an option, the price of the product is going to be based on the relationship with the stock. So as the stock goes up, it goes up. Stock goes down, it goes down. So all of those things, they kind of protect against inflation a little bit. I mean, the uh, shorter ones, not so much, but if you buy a convertible bond, you're getting income, but you're also getting the upside of the stock. If they have a great year, you, the stock goes up, so does a convertible. Because think about it, if I have a product, a convertible, that turns into four of something else, can we agree that this will always be worth four of this? Because if this turns into four of that, well, this will always be priced four times that because we're in a sufficient market. So not only if you buy a convertible, best of both worlds, you get a coupon every month, you're getting paid, every six months you're getting paid, but you're also getting the fluctuations of the common stock, which means it should be the inflation a little bit and based on that. So since you're getting that extra gift of volatility, if you want to call it a gift, the, the, the uh, issuer goes, uh-uh, if that's true, we're not paying you as much. So if I am catch tutoring, I go public, say I, I issue a bond. If I issue a regular bond, it's going to pay, say, well, because – because oh, I am probably 30% because nobody likes me. But let's say I issued a bond at like 9%. So I issued at nine. And then I go, you know what? Let me do a convertible. Well, the convertible has features that are that you would make you want to buy it more. So maybe I can offer that at like six or 7% less. Not six or 7% less, less than 9% at like six or 7%. Because I'm giving you a feature. Anytime you add a feature that's better for the investor, the return goes down. You, I mean, it's not a direct correlation with common stock, but with bonds and anything that pays you where I have to, the issuer has to pay you, damn right. If I if, if I make a bond non-callable, I'm paying you less. If I if I put a put feature in, I'm paying you less. If it's a preferred and it's participating or cumulative, I'm paying you less than I would with the other ones, okay? It's just supply demand. I, I know I'm giving you something. More people be attracted to that type of bond. I'm going to pay less. So let's get into it. So convertible bond turns into common stock. A lot of the questions come out and say, okay, how do I know whether I should convert or not? So let's do the math. Let's go to Zoom, my share screen. Let's go to the whiteboard. So let's say, oh, let's put the glasses on because I am freaking blind. So now I am. I wasn't always. So let's say you own one, one, eight, good old ABC, 8%. Bond, we'll call it a convert. If I spell it wrong, I apologize. I probably did. It was horrible. Convertible bond. And let's say it's trading at 104, which you remember, 104 is 104% of par. So that's really 1,040. We'll put that there just so you can see it. Wonderful stuff because I'm just that nice a guy. 1040. Okay. Now, kind of keeps flipping down there, baby. Come on, let's stop that. Okay. So now, that's a convertible bond. Now, since it's convertible, you have to know what it will convert into. So you you're trying to figure out converts at, let's say, 25 bucks. That means if the bond was trading at $1,000 and you converted it, it would be like getting the stock at 25 bucks a share. So, so this is, let's go there. And then let's say the ABC Common is trading at, oh, let's make up a number, 27. Five, just to make it hard for myself. 2759, that'd be ridiculous. I couldn't do that. Okay, so let's put the little dollar sign so that we got it. Okay, so ABC Common is trading at 2750. Let's throw another fee, let's throw another wrinkle into it. Callable at 105. 
That means it's callable at 105% apart. We good? So now what do we do? How do we know what's to do? Right now, if they didn't call it or anything, screw it, keep it. Because you're getting 80 bucks a year and you're getting the growth of the stock. Because as the stock goes up, the, the price of the bond will go up. <clears throat> so let's say they call it, boom, they're, they're going to call it. That means the issuer is going to buy it back for 105. You now have to shit or get off the pot. You have to do something. Either you're either going to have to convert it, you're going to have to sell it, or let it be called. One of the two, you have to figure out what's the best way to do it. So the first thing you have to do is find out how many shares it turns into. So let's do that, baby. So the first thing you do is you do 1,000, which is par. So if it's a preferred, it's 100, right? So 1,000 divided by the convertible price, the ad price. You do 1,000 divided by 25. That's going to equal the ratio, which is really how many shares you get, the number of shares you get if you convert. Three of shares. Just hit a freaking pound sign. There you go. The number of shares you get when you convert. Okay. I'll write it out so you can look at it. Okay. So that's that. Put a little parentheses just so we know it's there. Now, 1,000 divided by 25. Everyone do the calculator. Boom. We got 40. That our ratio is 40 to 1. That means for every bond that we convert, we get 40 shares of stock. Pretty simple. Boom. Sometimes that's all they ask and we move on. <laughs> now, that's not COVID. It's just the allergies, my sickness. I've been coughing since 9 11. Now, sorry for another day. So now we have 40 to 1. I think we're good there. That means for every bond we convert, we get 40 shares. But how do we figure out whether it's worth it or not? Ah, <clears throat> so ABC is trading at 27.50. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply. So now I'm going to get 40 shares of a $27.50 stock. So let's find the old rusty, dusty calculator and go, okay. So I'm going to do 40, the ratio, times 27.5. That works out to be 1,100. So that means if I were to convert, if I were to convert, I would get $1,100. So now I can compare. So I either sell it and get 104 or 1,040. I let it be called and get 1,050. Or I convert it and I get $1,100 worth of stock. Which do you think you should do? I'll make it easy. You sell it. No, I'm kidding. You convert it, you're going to get $1,100. That's much more worth it. So that's worth it. Now, arbitrage is when you buy one thing and sell another at the exact same time to capture an inefficiency. My example is always, when I first started on the stock exchange, there was a Pacific Coast, the P Coast. It, it, say IBM traded here and there. So say it traded here at 41 and there at 42. Big gap, it wouldn't be that big. But what I could do is to capture that difference. By I would buy the stock here in New York and at the exact same time, sell it. I'd buy it as 41 and at the exact same time, sell it short on the Pacific Coast at 42. And then I would close the cover the short position with my what I bought at 41, make a dollar. It's like almost a guaranteed profit. So... In this case, it's profitable to do this. Right now, it's profitable. That would be a positive or a profitable arbitrage situation because what we would do is we could buy one bond for 104, 1,040, and at the exact same time, sell short 40 shares of ABC at 2750 and bring in 1,100. We would, in that case, make $60. So it'd be a profitable arbitrage, okay? All arbitrage is, is buying one thing and selling it at the exact same time at a different price, on a different location, and making um, making the difference. It's not the same as a wash trade where you're buying and selling without own it, changing ownership, but you're not doing it. Arbitrage, you're trying to make money. Wash trade, you're tra trying to manipulate the market, and that's a violation. Okay, so that's basics, the convertible, just the math on that. Okay, now what if they don't give you the stock? What if they don't give you the uh, stock price? So let's say they don't give you that, okay? Now we have all this stuff. So the question becomes, what's the parity? They could do that. They could say, what's the parity of it? Basically, you might see, where should the common stock be trading to be equal to the bond? So it's at 1,040. We know we're getting 40 shares. So instead of multiplying times the stock price, we would just do 1040 divided by 40. Let's bring out the handy dandy calculator. Where is it? Hey, okay, where do you find it? There it is. Looks like my email, so it's tough. I'm going to do a 1040 divided by 40, and that gives me 26. 
So where the stock should be trading to be at parity with the bond is 26 bucks. So here's the thing, first step with a convertible, divide par divided by the convertible price, boom. That gives you the ratio, the number of shares you get. Then the next step is you're either, doesn't really matter, you're either gonna multiply that ratio times the common stock price, or you're gonna divide the bond price, the market price of the bond by that ratio. In this case, you're either multiplying the 40 times the 2750 that I gave before, or you divide the 1,040 by the 40 and you get 26. Either way works. I prefer to do multiply because then I have a bond price, a call price, and a, um, <clears throat> a convertible price. Now, remember, you, once you get it to that point, you choose whichever one's the higher is the one you do. A couple of things. One, make sure they're not saying least because then if it's a least, you take the worst. Two, sometimes they do the thing for you. Sometimes they go like this. They'll say this. Instead of saying it converts at, they'll say it converts into 40 shares. That means they did the first step for you, so then you don't have to do this anymore. They did it for you. Pay attention, because if you do 1,000 divided by 40, you're going to get 25, which is a wrong number. They can use 25, 50. They can use any number for the convertible price, and they can use almost any number for the converts into. But just remember, if they give you, if you see it turns into how many shares, they've done the first step for you. <clears throat> now, I'm going to do the same thing real quick with a preferred, though. A couple different numbers, maybe. So let's see what happens. Let's change this into a preferred. Make it a convertible preferred. PFD, because I'm lazy. Trade, let's trade trading at, uh, let's make up a number. Guys, what's a good number? Oh, 108. Sure, that works. Okay. 108, that's really $108. Let's say it's <clears throat> converts it at, um, let's say, $50 a share. Converts at $50 a share, okay? And we'll say the ABC is trading at 53, okay? So it's trading at 53 bucks. It's convertible at 50, so let's do this. Par on a preferred is 100, so we're gonna do 100 divided by 50. That equals a ratio of two. That means we're gonna get two shares of common for the preferred. See, it's only $100 par because it's a preferred. So we get two shares, that's my ratio now. With that $2 raise, two times ratio, I'm going to go, okay, well, the common stock is 53. I'm going to do a two times 53. So that gives me two times 53 equals, I can't hit a single button, equals 106. Ah, so if I would convert, I would only get $106. So I think it'd be better off selling it because if I sell it, I get 108. If I convert, I get 106. I'll take the 108. So in this case, I would sell the bond, not convert. You're going to get also a choice of hold on to the bond. So in this case, you could. You don't have to convert. But if they call it, that that's off the table. So if they call the bond, if you say they called it at 104, 103, they would, um, you lose the choice of holding on to it. You would either have to convert, <clears throat> sell it, or um, what are you going to say? Or tender to the call. So whatever is higher, that's what you do. One last thing. If you see they call it and it's profitable to, so my previous one was if they called it, it was better to convert and make more money. That's called a forced conversion. They're not actually making you doing it, do it, but they're going to call it when it's profitable to convert because that means most people will convert. So once that happens, if you convert, then one, the issuer doesn't have to pay the interest anymore and they got rid of the bond. So a lot of their liabilities comes off. So it works out for them. They reduce their interest, overall interest costs on an annual basis by doing that. Thank you for listening. And please like, share, and subscribe to this. And see you on Tuesday nights with my live.